In our last video, we traveled with Jesus in Luke chapters 18 and 19 and some of the encounters people have with Jesus. I went on YouTube and I searched that phrase, encounters with Jesus, and maybe you'd be surprised of how many videos there are of people who say that they've had encounters with Jesus. There was one where this guy says Jesus shows up in his life regularly two times a week, like he has a standing appointment with Jesus twice a week. Some of these people say that they've seen visions of him, that they've, they've, shook, they've shaked his hand before, uh, that uh, he comes to them in dreams. Um, and it's interesting that so many people claim to have these encounters with Jesus. And I'll tell you right now that I can't with any certainty tell you that any of those weren't legit. People might have had actual encounters with Jesus, but even as a pastor, I can sit here and tell you, I can't tell you that they were either. When people have encounters with Jesus and say that they've, they've seen his face and heard his voice and he comes to speak to them personally and have coffee twice a week. I can't tell you that that's real any more than I can tell you that that's not real. But I can tell you where I encounter Jesus, where we have reliable encounters with Jesus. And it starts, it starts with prayer. Prayer is a reliable place where you and I can encounter Jesus. And we don't have to wait for Jesus to keep his standing appointment twice a week. We can talk to him anytime. He makes himself available to us 24 seven. Now, I'm gonna share this story of a Sunday that happened recently. I was getting ready for church and it had been a really rough week. It wasn't easy to get everything under control and there were so many things that seemed to be falling apart. Each new text on my phone was another thing that I was like, I don't wanna check it because this is gonna be another fire that somebody's gonna to have to put out. And as I was getting ready to come into church for worship and Bible study, I prayed. And it wasn't an elegant prayer or anything. I just told Jesus, I need you to stand up in the boat and I need you to calm this storm. Because I've tried to put my arms around this storm all week long and it's only getting worse. So I need you to do your job and stop, stop, stop me from trying to do your job. I just need to be on board the boat and you take over. And do you know what happened the rest of that day? Um, things, things fell into place. Things that I was worried about for a week huh, had suddenly solved themselves. That's not what happened. Jesus clearly took care of it. I had an encounter with Jesus because I knew Jesus from the Bible and I know that he can calm the storms, even proverbial storms, figurative storms of the stress and headaches in our life. So you can have an encounter with Jesus in prayer. And then do you want to hear Jesus answer? If you want to hear Jesus answer, then another place where you can have an encounter with Jesus is his word. I asked my wife, Susie, where, where do you encounter Jesus? And this was her answer. She says, I open the Bible and I get to meet Jesus. Now, if you're reading something like we are in the, the book of Luke, uh, then you get to hear Jesus' own words. You get to hear how Jesus uh, tackles big questions and how he solves people's big problems. And ultimately, how he dies on the cross, forgives your sins, and promises you a new life today and a life that lasts forever. This is good news, cover to cover. Even the parts that don't tell Jesus' story directly are always pointing to the work that Jesus does. So if you want an encounter with Jesus, you don't have to wait. Pick up your Bible. You can hear him speak to you there. You know where else I reliably have encounters with Jesus? when I talk to other people. Now this, this is, might sound strange that I meet Jesus when I meet other people, but let me tell you what I mean. So uh, last week, uh, one of your parents, I'm not gonna spoil it, one of your parents um, wanted to make sure that I knew what was going on in confirmation from their kid's perspective. And she told me about, um, about the stories that you share on the way home and what it's like to to, to learn from these videos, to be together when we're in our small groups. And she told me, huh, 
what, what a difference it made. And that was encouraging. That's encouraging to me as I, when I uh, study the Bible and prepare a lesson. That's encouraging to me as I get up and sometimes do goofy stuff in front of everybody. That I had Jesus' encouragement come to me through one of your parents. And that happens all the time. That the people who believe and belong to Jesus then reflect Jesus. That the people who have been called by the light of the world to be the light of the world are actually shining the light of Jesus in my life too. So if you want a reliable encounter with Jesus, you've got prayer, you've got God's word, and you've got interactions with other believers in Christ. Do you know where all three of those things come together? Come together in worship on Sunday. If you want an encounter with Jesus, I'm telling you, be in worship on Sunday because we pray there and we hear the we hear the good news of God's word and we're there together with other people and in worship he goes even farther he gives us incredible gifts in worship we experience some really unique ways to encounter Jesus the gift of the Lord's Supper that Jesus would say here I am in my true body and blood here for your forgiveness, life, and salvation. It's incredible that we encounter Jesus at the Lord's Supper. And then baptism. We've had some baptisms this year. You can recall your own baptism. That was your encounter with Jesus. As he, as he raised you to new life in him and tied you forever to his story of death and resurrection, you encountered Jesus in baptism. And we get to celebrate that every time we have a, a baptism in worship. We like to imagine that Jesus does things the way we want, that we can encounter Jesus on our terms, that we can pencil him into our calendars and plan on that regular encounter with Jesus. But often he shows up in ways we can't predict. Who would predict that he would give us his body and blood in the Lord's Supper? or that he'd use simple water to join us to his story, or that he would give us his life story in a way that we can access it in paper, whenever we want, on our phone, wherever we go, that we have encounters with Jesus all the time, reliable, faithful encounters with Jesus, accessible to us anytime we want. Who'd predict that I could have an encounter with Jesus through someone else, through another believer in Jesus, another forgiven sinner just like me, is there to share the love and the light of Jesus Christ. So here's the big question this week. Where are you encountering Jesus? And also, how are others encountering Jesus through you? Really think about it. Talk about it with your family too. Where are you encountering Jesus? And where are others encountering Jesus through you? And you've talked about it at home. We'll talk about it with our groups too. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for gifts like prayer, the Bible, the fellowship of belonging to a family of faith, and for the places where all those gifts come together, like in worship with the additions of your great gifts of baptism and the Lord's Supper. Uh, help us to not uh, wait for you to show up in uh, one of those miraculous YouTube ways, but not to ignore the fact that we can have encounters with Jesus whenever we want, all the time, that you have purposed to be in our lives nonstop. Help us to embrace the opportunities to encounter you in the ways that you bring a love that changes us. We pray in your name. Amen.